Properly using the provided tools and instructions will yield a weld that is 100% of the band's tensile strength. It is important to note that a clean environment contributes toward ensuring a proper weld. Make sure the area is well ventilated and free of dirt, dust, and draft. Conduct a sample weld in the area where the installation will occur to ensure a proper weld. In addition to the tools provided in the welding kit, the following items will be required. Heat and cut resistant gloves, compressed air, a putty knife, and a utility knife. Place the welding kit in the area where welding will take place. The welding clamp becomes extremely hot during operation, so it is important to place the clamp on a surface that will not be damaged by the heat. On the left side of the control box is a thermocouple and ground wire. Plug the thermocouple and ground wire into the control box. On the right side of the control box is a fuse holder and the main power cord that is plugged into a 120 volt electrical power source. Move the temperature control switch to the cool position. The orange indicator light will come on and the display will show the ambient work area temperature. Press the up arrow to set the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a good quality pair of scissors, cut each end of the band square. On one of the cut ends, place the template on the top tapered side of the band and equally align the template with the end and sides of the band. Next, use a marker to trace the outline of the template onto the band. Now using good quality scissors, cut out the S-shaped splice outline. Take the band end containing the S-shaped cut and place it on top of the other band end. Align the sides and end. Use a marker to trace the outline. Next, cut out the S outline on the band. The two ends should now fit together. From one band end, measure 4.5 inches in from the S-cut. Draw an indicator mark in this location. The indicator mark on the band gives a visual reference for centering the band end in the welding fixture. The welding block has a taper to match that of the taper edge band. You will need to match the thick edge of the band with the deep side of the welding block. The smooth, shiny side of the band is the tapered side and must be facing up. Insert the end of the band with the indicator mark into the welding fixture, making sure the indicator mark lines up with the end of the welding fixture. Tighten the wing nuts until the belt is held in place, but do not tighten them completely at this time. Insert the other end of the band into the opposite end of the welding fixture, making sure the two band ends contact. Tighten the wing nuts until the band is secured and then tighten all four wing nuts evenly until the coil springs are completely compressed. On the control box, move the temperature control switch to the heat position. The red indicator light will come on and the temperature of the welding fixture will begin to rise. When the temperature reaches 400 degrees Fahrenheit, move the temperature control switch to the cool position. The yellow indicator light will now come on. Position the compressed air nozzle at the front of the welder between the two slots and blow air on the unit until the welding fixture cools to a temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It is important to note that compressed air must be used to allow for rapid cooling of the welding fixture. Allowing the welding fixture to cool slowly without the use of compressed air will result in extreme band warping.
Loosen all wing nuts and rotate the front studs downward. Lift the top heating plate and remove the taper edge band from the welding fixture. A putty knife may be needed to assist in removing the band. If necessary, use a utility knife to trim any excess flash from the band. Here you can see what a good finished weld should look like. For more information or technical assistance, please contact your Fenner Drives representative.